December, I had paid my car loan off and I had applied for two credit cards in December. So in January, my credit score had dropped to like a 700. And so I'm just like, dang, is my credit score going to continue to drop? Well, I've been doing monthly updates and y'all, I was looking at my credit score and my credit score is up to a 716. So I'm really excited about it. So in this video, we're going to talk about how was I able to increase my credit score about 15 points, 15, 16 points from last month. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, I'm Tasha from the Major Change Group where we believe small changes can create big results. And if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. We talk about how to get our money straight, how to increase our credit score, and how to use our credit cards like a debit card. So last month when I was checking my credit score, well, I was actually able to not only get my Experian credit score, but I was able to unlock all my credit scores. So I believe my credit score was like a 701 for my Experian, a 721 for my TransUnion, and then I can't remember my Equifax score, but I'll put it here. And so I was saying, okay, at least my credit score had not dropped under a 700 because that was a goal because I didn't want it to get any lower. And then this month, my credit score has increased to a 716 for my experience. But I wasn't able to unlock the other credit scores because y'all know I'm not going to pay the additional fees to get all of the credit scores. <laughs> so in this video, we're just going to talk about my experience credit score and i am really excited about it so while i only have the free version of the experience i really like that they send you emails they probably send me like a couple of emails a week <laughs> but this email caught my attention because it was stating that well congratulations with your credit utilization you know being one percent that's really helping your credit score and it was saying that you know with your credit utilization you really want it to be 30 percent or lower but it was saying that if you can keep it 6% or lower, that's when, you know, that's elite status right there. So we want to make sure that we are keeping our credit utilization low. And, you know, my credit utilization is 1%. And even though I'm using a credit card utilization hack, and so what I'll do is I'll leave between 2 and 7%. I'll rotate that on like one or two credit cards. And even, I want to say, on my Navy Federal credit card, I left 2%. And then on my American Express, I thought that I had left 7 but I left 9%. But even with me leaving the 9% and the 2%, I only still am able to get the 1% credit utilization. So I think what I'm going to do is, it's possible that maybe I could add another credit card, especially since I have the 9 credit cards. I really need to be rotating and using them because I don't want them to close, you know, like Bank of America did me, even though I do have small reoccurring purchases, but I could also increase it to maybe 3% and 7% or even, you know, the three and the nine, it didn't, well, the two and the nine, it didn't hurt it. So I can maybe play around with the numbers in April so that I can see if I can get it to report at least 2% or 3%. But let me know in the comments, do you have any tips or tricks that you use when you are trying to increase your credit score? But I think that using the credit card utilization hack is one way to increase your credit score. Now, on the other hand, if you have a high credit card utilization, you really want to decrease that utilization. So start at 30% and then lower. Now, I know y'all got those tax refund checks because <laughs> we still, you know, March and in April. So I know y'all got those tax refund checks. So possibly consider maybe, maybe not taking all of the money, but maybe using some of it to pay down on the credit card debt so that you can get the utilization down at least 30% or lower and then work to get it 10% or lower and then 6% or lower. The lower, the better. And so what I like to do with the credit card utilization hack that I use, like I said, I like to use one, two credit cards, but I might end up adding a third credit card, but I'm just using it on my natural spending. So I'm using it on my groceries, my dining, any spending that I'm doing, and then I'll leave the two or the 7% or the 9% like I did on the American Express everyday credit card. 
And then after the statement date, then maybe like a couple of days after the statement date, then I'll pay the credit card off. And then that way I'm not paying any interest on the credit card because I would say that's the main thing, especially if you're doing credit card churning or stuff like that, but you're getting the points, the rewards, the cash back. You really don't want to be paying interest on the credit card because that's going to be eating up the whatever the rewards or cash back that you're going to be getting. So I like to suggest using you know not paying any interest on the credit card and you can also check out i'm gonna try to pin the video here to where i was talking about credit cards it was five credit cards that you could apply for that have zero percent interest for at least 12 up to i want to say 21 months and you can even do balance transfers on a couple of those credit cards if you're trying to pay your credit card debt down but mainly, I'm very excited that my credit score has not dropped any lower and that I'm really kind of back to where I was at in December because I feel like in December, I was around maybe 720. And so now that I'm at uh, 716, I'm kind of right there. So I'm going to just continue to do the credit card utilization hack and... I hope that, especially like in May, because I do have a few late payments on my credit report. So I'm hoping that maybe some of those might fall off to where that's going to increase my credit score. Now, as I have been talking to you guys about increasing my credit score, I did let you know that, you know, we have our payment history, our credit utilization, our length of credit, our credit mix, and our new credit. And so our payment history is 35% of our credit score. And right now I do have a few uh, late payments on my credit report, you know, since I had cosigns, but I, you know, we're in a good place with the payments and everything. So I'm hoping that some of them will fall off since it's coming up on a year. So I'm hoping that that's going to help because I feel like once I'm able to drop some of those off, then I'll really be able to see an increase in my credit score to maybe like a, 750 or maybe even an 800 because my credit utilization is great 1%. My length of credit is really good. It's over 10 years. And then I want to say I only have two inquiries on my credit report. And those are the two credit cards that I had applied for in December. And so I'm really, and then my credit mix is good too. So for the most part, I have a pretty good credit profile. It's really those late payments is what's really kind of making my score go down. So it's very important that we, you know, make sure that our payment history is really good. But let me know in the comments, when you have paid off debt, let's say a car loan, some student loans, <laughs> or any debt that you have paid off, how did it impact your credit score? And then how long did it take for your credit score to increase? Well, I hope that this video was helpful. Please like, subscribe, share with a friend, turn your notification bell on so you will be notified when new content drops. I thank you so much for watching. Until next time. It's not a game, it's a